here's the deal. We always jump into these uh, New Year episodes and we do our whole resolution thing and we don't have PJ here. So I don't think we can actually do the resolution episode just yet. Maybe not. Uh, or do you want to recap? Oh, no. I was just going to say, um, I, I already know what the episode is. We need to go camping more. The end. That's pretty much it. It's what it is every year. That's pretty much it. So let me do our intro and then let's 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 talk about some RV stuff. Maybe some goals for 2024. Welcome to the RV Small Talk podcast where we talk about library trailers, truck campers, and the people, places, and adventures that go right along with them. We're your host from Princess Craft RV. I'm Clint. And I'm not PJ. I'm Lindsay. Nope. nope. She is PJ's progeny. Progeny? Progeny. What is that a SAT word? I don't know. I didn't see it on the SAT when I took it. Uh, okay, so what does progeny mean and why am I one? Uh, progeny is pretty much offspring. Oh, yeah, I am that. Yeah, you're definitely that. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> we digress. Uh, again, this is, this is a podcast and we have a website. If you want to check out previous episodes and future episodes, it's uh, rvsmalltalk.com. And you can find us on social media if you just look us up. RV Small Talk. We are going to go into our very busy season because it's show season for RV dealerships. It's rally season for us right after show season. There's going to be a lot going on. It's true. Do you I'm have thoughts? Almost scared of February. I'm actually quite scared of February. <laughs> <laughs> but right now it's January, so let's just not think about it. Yeah. So my working title for this podcast episode and it may change you may see it is exactly this is we've got your spring rv activities planned or plans or something like that i have some typos in my working title so we're planning activities for when it's not so cold yeah and i think it's i think the thing is is i think i was going through i still every year at the beginning of the year it's a little bit of a reset i want to think of goals and things and you know i, I still don't like the resolution thing no. I don't. And yet, if I say goals, it's the same thing. It's kind of dumb of me to be so anti-resolution. Well, I think your thing was like the New Year's resolution, like like being forced into this mm -hmm. pinhole of making a resolution and making it so on, official, at the maybe? first of the year. Yeah. When it's like, but why can't I make a resolution on March 3rd? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Fair enough. I mean, you, yeah, you've never been anti-goal. You've been anti tell me when to make a I'm goal. I'm very goal oriented. <laughs> I love watching like soccer games. They and the they no! they have one pursuit there and I have one pursuit to watch them attain their goals. Attain their goals. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Uh, so what I mean, so in making this list was it kind of like a list for you? Well, um, since I did spend a little bit more time thinking these thoughts up, it is probably things that are on my mind a little bit. But you may recall that it is difficult to sit for me right now. And I'm doing my best right now. You, you're doing great. I, I feel like I've made it two or three minutes. And that is because right before the end of the year, I herniated some discs in my lower back and caused some sciatic pain. And, and it's taken a real good long time to get comfortable just driving to work and whatnot. Yeah. But in that vein, I have over the course of the next few months, a real goal to do the doctor's orders and stretch and do those exercises and, and heal up the back that, because you may also recall, I herniated these discs the same way in October of last year. So this, I, I do recall. And what I, <laughs> what I have learned is even though I was feeling like I had turned a corner, things were good after six to eight weeks from that first injury. I wasn't actually healed, which is why this happened again. Yeah. So badly. You well, jelly donated yourself. So yeah, my jelly donuts between my 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 uh, vertebrae just squished on out. Blech. Yeah, right pressure right on my nerves. Blech. So it's getting on my nerves, if you will. I digress. You're doing so good sitting. <laughs> <laughs> That's proud of me. Um, Clint has a standing desk now. He I just do. stands all the time. Yeah. It, it, and I and by the time I get home from work, I'm in tears. No. Um, <laughs> but yeah, of joy. <laughs> so I was thinking, okay, what are some things to be active, to be mobile, um, to work on? Obviously, do my stretches, do my exercises, but... When I am improving and uh, and allowing myself time to not go full on, what are some things to look forward to, activity wise? 
when I'm out and about camping with my family. And some of these will fit what I already do. And some of these are things I've never tried. Yeah. But to be more active. Yeah. And I was th- it's spring. It's, it's, it's spring. And I was thinking our viewers, you don't just like to sit around. That's a that's a very nice component of RVing. I mean, and camping. some RVers do, but most of them don't. Yeah. <laughs> So I wanted to get in some ideas for activities and maybe some ways of thinking about activities to do while we're out camping and RVing and traveling. Yes. Okay. Do you have any ideas? Um, what uh, What's this pickleball craze all about? Funny you should ask. Let's it's the first thing there. on my list. <laughs> and one thing that, that comes to mind is we have friends in our RVing community that do pickleball and I've never done it. Uh, so I had to look it up. You play it. You don't do it. You don't do pickleball? I'm going to do basketball. Yeah, you do basketball. <laughs> yeah, go on, do, do basketball. <laughs> no, you do. You play pickleball. It is a game. It's like tennis and badminton and what ping pong kind of mix, mixed together. I mean, hit something over a net. Yeah. 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 But the cor- the court is scaled down significantly. And since you're using paddles instead of rackets, um, the the... The range of motion and the speed and whatever is required of your body is brought down to a degree that is very accessible to pretty much anyone toddler age up. Huh. Which makes it very, so you can, you, and just, the court is small enough that you might be able to create your own court in your own driveway. Yeah. And I know that pickleball being like the craze that it is, RV parks are starting to That's get what I was thinking. pickleball courts, uh, uh, state parks, right. you know, just like they used to have the the shuffleboard. You know right. how the shuffleboard was everywhere? It was. And now it's, you know, now it's like a, I'm doing air quotes, y'all, a old people game. Right. But like now pickleball is the new thing. You don't really see shuffleboard mm-hmm. anymore, but pickleball courts are everywhere. They're building three pickleball courts in my neighborhood right across from my house. So I've never played pickleball before, but I'm very excited to stare at the courts. Exactly. And maybe do it with your kids or something because they're oh, going to be interested. Absolutely. So I was thinking, and even for our rallies, I was like, I wonder how hard it would be to, to tape out some pickleball courts for our rallies and all that because That's not a bad idea. some of our rally goers play pickleball. I'm thinking Libby. Mm-hmm. I've seen that she and plays. Libby and Steve, yeah. Um, so that was one of those things. And so with pickleball, the the idea is for for me is it's interesting it engages the mind but it also engages the whole body there's range of motion there's some flexibility involved involved i you know when my back's more healthy i'll be able to i might be able to try this out and we go since i mean usually you play with more than one person mm-hmm. there's socialization and yeah. and some you know fun happening sure so the, the, i have on here you know what are the health benefits and i'll probably have these in the show notes if i ask caitlin nicely enough uh from <laughs> health.com some of the benefits they list out specific benefits related to pickleball like low impact workout cardio socialization mental health and cognitive skills which is really where i need the most help because i should know better <laughs> what's it what's next route hiking but but with a twist. Yeah. With resolutions. Goals. With Yeah, with resolutions. <laughs> so uh, my thought was it's easy for me and my house to say we need to hike more. Just just it's a flippant remark that comes mm-hmm. up pretty often. We need to hike more. I say we it's need too to general. blank more a lot. I mean, clean well, that's more, a sleep different more. different podcast. No, I'm um, just saying like <laughs> Never mind. So uh, keep talking about hiking. Yikes. Keep talking about hiking. Family friendly. So um, I think that whenever you can pair up more than one goal, you say the general thing of hiking. Is my face red? <laughs> okay. So so when you say the general thing, we need to hike more, that's one kind of general goal. But if you say I really have a goal of hiking more of the state parks or to hike specifically this year four hikes at over 8,000 feet. Now you have two goals together and they have some compounding factor. And it seems more fun, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Let's go for a hike or let's see if we can find a place to hike that's over this altitude. Or I've never hiked for more than an hour. 
Oh. I would like to hike for three hours or whatever. I mean, Absolutely. Maybe you want to go chasing waterfalls. No, don't. It's what do you need to do the, instead? The, the, uh, just stick, to, stick the, with, to the rivers, rivers and the is... lakes that you're used to. It took me a second for my head to catch up there. I was like, I could see the music video and everything, and I just could not get the words out. Yeah. But yeah. So, so I, I just had, threw some things out. Number of hikes. Maybe you have a goal of just how many hikes. Maybe it's oh, distance hikes. How ooh. far? You're kind of talking about time. Yeah. That could be the same thing as distance, altitude goals, specific destinations. Maybe you want to see three lighthouses. Hike two lighthouses. You know, hike to those waterfalls. Hike to caves. Hike in caves. Hiking with goals. Hiking with goals. So what are the health benefits? Well, you're hiking. So, uh -huh. I mean, it's physical exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mental health. You can really get on top of that internal conversation game. I don't even know what relational health is. If you hike with your relations, you might actually oh, like talk to each other. Oh, yeah. Versus, I mean, that is if you're not hiking I'm, with yeah. a, a, a smartphone in front of your face. Well, I'm usually out of breath when I'm hiking, so my conversations sound like this. See, that's relational too, because you're all, you know, <laughs> inhaling and exhaling the same air. <laughs> so we do have a link for that as well, not for the breathing thing, but for the for the health benefits from the uh, nps.gov website. You got another one? This I one do. you like. This, <laughs> this one you like. I, this I've one never, is mine. <laughs> I've never really liked this, but I okay, I, but I might be turning a corner because of how often I have to do stretches these yes, days. Yes, and that's what I was going to say is yoga is one thing. Uh, yoga is a great thing to do when you're outside, when you're camping. Have you guys ever heard of grounded? Things happen when yeah. you put your bare feet on the ground. That's not how my parents use that word. <laughs> anyway... Uh, yoga seems to be a little intimidating to people. Like you have to be able to put your foot behind your head or stand on one Ooh. foot for 20 seconds. <laughs> but the reality is yoga is glorified stretching and breathing. Mm -hmm. So super easy to do. You don't even need a lot of equipment. I love yoga because I don't really know a lot of the poses and the moves mm -hmm. and the flows, as they call them, where moves move into other moves. But it really, I mean, just sit and or stand in <laughs> Clint's mm -hmm, connection mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and move the way it feels good. Right. Yeah. If you are, I mean, it. It really does help if you do it every day or even if you do it every time you go camping. If you just stretch and move to whatever feels good, you might look a little funny, but my goodness, it feels good. What are the health yeah. benefits of yoga? Well, see, here's here's kind of my my take as far as me. Y'all, I'm a middle middle aged man. This must have happened yesterday because I, I didn't see it coming. But I'm like a middle aged man. And I started thinking and this is another reason I figured out I'm in middle age. I started thinking about these things. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, why am I excited about a blender? Uh, yeah. I'm middle aged. I can't and I, I can't. I know I'm not the only one. There's there's like three or four things that, that help you to to age well, to be one of the the last mobile old people in Last your social standing. yeah in your yeah in your social group you know yeah. and that is uh to be that to be that 80 or 90 year old person who still gets around then you you need a few things and one of those is um is some flexibility mm -hmm. that's a massive thing mm -hmm. uh, another thing is balance why do you think i kick people in the face all the time um because you're pretty proud of yourself you didn't get your foot that way up there yeah because i'm, I'm it's it's flexibility well when i'm standing uh, i'm i feel a little bit safer <laughs> yeah I, can, I can't get to you so so flexibility balance and then some level of, of of strength and endurance yes and i think that yoga or if you just want to say thoughtful stretching because like we said it's largely the same thing if, yeah, and yoga can scare some people because they're like what i don't want to drink kombucha and right right no just you know if stretch. you just take <laughs> if you just do you know thoughtful stretching on a regular basis 
And and then you develop all those things, the balance, the strength, the endurance, the flexibility. Was, uh, flexibility. Mm -hmm. And if that's all there, what more do you want as someone who enjoys the outdoors and likes to do things outdoors related? Yeah. You need those things. If you're going to cross little brooks and streams on a fallen tree, you need all those things. You need to be nimbly bimbly. <laughs> yes, yeah, specifically the bimbly part. <laughs> uh, yoga is also a lot more fun, just like hiking, anything else. When you have that goal, when you say, you know, my goal is to be able to kick Clint in the face. You know, I got to work on my flexibility and my balance. But when you have I don't a have goal, the same goal, <laughs> <laughs> any goal that you have, it makes it I don't know. Yeah. Being more flexible, being able to hike longer mm -hmm. because you do yoga. Sure. Um, I like how you have written here yoga in the woods, on the beach, on your walk on roof, which I've done before. It's pretty mm, fun mm -hmm. on a picnic table by a waterfall. <laughs> like, That's right. It just sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. You should write this. Yeah. <laughs> like you could turn this into something. <laughs> so I do have, once again, the question, what are the health benefits? And I have some from the HopkinsMedicine.org. There will be a link there, but obviously strength, balance, flexibility, back pain relief, which mm. goes along. So the the stretches I'm doing, now I have some um, experience with yoga for, through, through the years. The stretches that the doctor gave me, they're the same stretches. Yeah. They just aren't called yoga. <laughs> Arthritis symptoms, heart health, sleep, mood, stress management, and community. If sleep, you mood, and stress management for sure. Mm -hmm. You like, I can't tell you how many people are like, how is stretching going to help my mood? But it does. When you're moving your body like that, your brain is doing things too. Sure. And I think it releases the hormones things stuff you yeah know. <laughs> i like how we're like it's good for you just trust us we don't know science yeah. it's fine there's a physiology involved here you know good things happen so so <laughs> all good Ooh, this next one i'm scared of yeah mountain biking um I would... a lot of a lot of our friends do mountain biking i know i i have one in my garage have you ever like been on anything besides a road or one like time, a trail one time i went with a friend of mine who's in his 60s and at that point in time he was riding like walnut creek which is pretty serious and he was riding it seemed like two or three times a week until his knees turned to absolute trash Chris. and i went with him um i was like hey can you take i've never been can you take me with you sometime and the man terrified me because he's so good at it. And I was like, I'm going to fall. And everything, every rock looks so much larger it's, when you're when you're on two wheels trying to navigate something like that for the first time. Everything is jagged. Everything's jagged. <laughs> I mean, the river looked jagged and it well, wasn't frozen. Let's not scare the people. Tell them how much fun you had. I wanted to go again at the end, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. I wanted, I, mean, to, I wanted to get better at it. Um, our schedules stopped lining up and whatnot. It, it was definitely something I wanted to do more of. And I mean, yeah. How do you pick up mountain biking? Like, the, I don't know. Yoga seems way easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, here's the deal. And I learned this with mo motorcycling is there's a community and there's coaches. You can go hey, pick your Pick your path, whatever yeah. works for the type of person that you yeah. are. And then you probably do know someone with some kind of exposure to it. Mm -hmm. Start simple trail riding trail riding. and ride those trails, the easy trails until until you know them but like the back of your hand, just because you're having fun. If you never get progress further than that, but you're but you're moving more, you're good. I mean, it would be a cool hobby to pick up if you're already a camper, an mm -hmm. RVer. It's springtime. The snow has melted. Mm -hmm. Time to start something new. And uh, I just feel like you'd sound super badass if you're like, yeah, I'm a mountain biker. And what better place to do cycling than maybe the Ozarks? So my link for Ooh. what are the health benefits is OzarkOffRoadCyclist.com. And they have a good list. And to, to, to quickly hit on the points, but they break it down better is cardio, weight management, mental health, balance, coordination, and community. Community. Cardio for sure. Kayaking. I do love to kayak. You love being near the water anyways. I, I think there's something magical. Not magical, but 
Bit, bit, bit. About me or about water? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> this is a good time to say yes, everybody. <laughs> uh, um, about you and water. And kayaking. Yes. <laughs> there is something magical about water. And camping near water is my favorite. I mean, who doesn't like to camp near water? And the cool thing about kayaking, I think, is that it has become so popular that there's so many choices of kayaks. So it's not as hard mm -hmm. to kayak as it used to be. Mm -hmm. You got inflatable kayaks. You got fold-up kayaks. You got pocket kayaks um, for your ants. <laughs> not aunts and uncles <laughs> lady. no poor uncles <laughs> they're, it, and they're accessible there's so many in your neighbor's garages that don't get enough use mm -hmm. you can probably say hey yeah. may I borrow Facebook marketplace is a great place Fantastic. for the kayaks if you're camping at a state park many of them you can rent them yeah and boy is it a good workout yeah but you That's can the go deal. as it, fast or slow as you want you don't ever realize how much of a workout it is until oh. the evening afterwards. <laughs> until, yeah. Until, yeah. You, and you think it's just upper body, but it's core. It's upper body. And for some, why does you, why do your legs hurt after kayaking? Because you, cause it, you sat after, in that position too long? Well, for me, yeah. No, um, but you do. You have to you shift do. your weight, which moves your, I mean, like tenses your legs, I guess is yeah. how you say it. Yeah, I think it. It, it, it's it's part of the whole balancing mechanism, but also the turning for some reason. It's a little bit of a counterbalancing while working. It is more full body than I ever gave it credit for. And it's so, and you could just do it. I mean, you could just float around a lake mm -hmm. or you could, you know, like speed paddle. Sure. You can do it at your own pace. Mm -hmm. I feel like that, I'm not talking bad about mountain biking, but as opposed to mountain biking where it's like, well, you can't just like leisurely like go slow. You have to go a certain speed. You're always right, going to be going over right. rocks. Um, if you're going to get up the hill, you need some momentum. Right. <laughs> kayaking is like, you know, at, at your own speed. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a great thing to look into or do more of if you're already into it. I have a link there. It's uh, from a world to travel dot com. It says it's the health benefits, kayaking, weight management, upper, upper body strength, core strength, leg strength, health, heart health, reduced stress and improved sleep. Boom. I love it. And then the last one is one that I kind of threw in there for Annie. I know. And do you know who taught me how to sail? Did Annie teach you to, to sail? Yeah. Okay, so Annie is, she keeps the books, <laughs> she keeps us all sane here at Princess Craft RV. She's been here for quite a while and and she does these sailing races out on Lake, um, Ladybird Lake or is it Lake Travis? Lake Travis. Lake I think, Travis? I don't know. So she's been sailing for years, grew up sailing and all that. And she sails in these competitive little sunfish sailboat races. Mm -hmm. And she's won awards and all that. And then I found out that my um, my brother-in-law and his kids, they got into sailing too. So I looked it up and uh, and it looks just interesting. It is interesting. It's a lot of fun because um, it you, you have to use your body and your brain very quickly at the same right. time. And like sailing into the wind? It's ever that's changing. A, that's an art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. what, what do they call that? We're, we're uh, in iron, stuck in irons. Okay. Is what we called it. I don't know what the official, I mean, like y'all, I went to sailing camp when I was like 10. So, but I still remember. She's 27 now. So I'm, not, 20, sure I'm not 20. So sure. 26. Um, but you know, same as the kayak renting kayaks, you can rent sailboats, all kinds of places. If you're camping somewhere else, take a one day lesson, take a one day. Yeah. Learn how to do something new. And sailing is there's a sense of freedom, sense of like adventure right. that I guess I feel more on a sailboat than you do when you're kayaking. Yeah. It does feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just because you see it in movies. I, I don't, don't know. know. I think that there's a magic. I think yeah. there's a magic to it and maybe a connectedness to like, this is how they came from the old world. Right. Like <laughs> I'm suddenly a Viking. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> so, so I had that on there and I was in, in my mind – what kind of my, my rabbit trail that got me to sailing is that last year, I think it was last year, I I took a windsurfing class, a day long really? windsurfing class. And that was hard. It's yeah. so difficult. And I dreamt about it for weeks afterwards. Did you get up? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. I also fell down. Well, 
a lot. Duh. But it, it but it's a whole body thing. Just a, absolute exhaustion. But trying to work the wind and all that, it was incredible. I would take the class again. Um, and you can do that anywhere that there's there's a good lake with a breeze. I did it on the coast here in Texas, down near Corpus Christi when I camped there. Um, and so it's kind of in that vein that led me to sailing is is what I was going to put down as a top tier idea here. So what is your first thing that you're going to do on this list when your back feels better? What's your like the one you're looking forward to the most? OK, so because Clint's an active guy, y'all. I try to be. <laughs> and I want to be more, honestly. Um so I'm going to say, I'm not going to say yoga is my first because right now I'm doing daily stretching as guided by my physician and and I'm looking forward to those benefits. So so I'm not going to say it's kind of what I'm doing daily anyways. Right. Um, hiking will probably count, uh, happen first because it's glorified walking in much in, more interesting places. Ease into the activity. Exactly. But but which one are you most excited for? Because I have kids who will eat this up. I want to put a pickleball course on my driveway because I had a big old, I had a good four square course in my backyard growing up and all that. That's right. And four square is it, like four square. Well, pickleball might be the thing. And I could probably get the kids across the street to play with my oh, kids yeah. too. So oh, yeah. maybe their parents, because their parents are cool. So maybe this is a way to bring my street together. And if we pick it up on my driveway, then maybe we can take it with us to rallies and other campsites as well. I like your thought process, Clint. So yeah, yeah, and it's a real thought. It's really what I want to do. No, it's an actual thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like like I got the measurements on my on a tab on my desktop right now, so I can figure it out if I can put it on my driveway. True, <laughs> you, you. Well, I, you know, it's it's really fun sometimes, even though we're in the middle of winter, to think about everything thawing out, the sun coming out, going mm -hmm. camping again, and what is going to get you excited and moving in the spring because i mean yeah camping is fun let's let's add to it and do something new get yes. moving Woo! i'm excited now time to make those plans it is around the corner on just camping season Eek. All right, everybody, that wraps us up for this episode of the RV Small Talk Podcast. We thought we'd throw something together real fast and get on the mics. Hopefully, we'll have PJ with us soon, maybe the next episode. Look us up at rvsmalltalk.com and uh, do check out our rallies. We have some pretty spectacular rallies coming up, the Texas Tiny Trailer Rally and the Texas Truck Camper Rally. They are in the spring, and the Texas Tiny Trailer Rally is at the end of the week of the full solar eclipse so get information from texas tiny trailer rally.com because there is some special deal there related to you arriving early and getting a primo spot for the eclipse lindsay anything else um well i i i think all those spots are gone oh um sorry <laughs> find out who's on the list and <laughs> buy them out <laughs> yeah i think those spots are all gone but i could be wrong so call the park but anyway mm -hmm. yes join us for our rallies we're off to plan some rv shows we'll see you out there bye bye everybody